Kevin Strom, I'm the program director for the policing research program here at RTI. What we try and achieve is an independent research to inform approach towards guiding policing, but also improving the field of policing over time. We conduct a wide range of studies looking at how police agencies operate in this country, also how they can become more efficient and effective. In the biometrics and policing study, we're trying to develop new ways of measuring stress and emotional arousal in police officers. The emphasis of the biometrics and policing project is really to understand and look at stress in the policing field. Data is something that's an independent source for evaluating what they do, what they're faced with in the community. In the past, many of these studies have been self-report, so asking officers maybe at the end of a shift questions about how they experience stress other cases, it's observational studies through ride-alongs. We really felt that as technology emerged that would allow us to collect this in a more scientifically valid way. For example, you know, you see a lot of technology that everyday people wear, Fitbits and other devices that collect these types of measures. Really, I thought that was a model opportunity for us to implement this and really start to test it out in a real world situation. We were looking for two or three officers and within 24 hours we had over 25 participants who weren't even aware of any kind of associated incentive for participating. My name is Anna Carter. I'm a uniform patrol officer with the city of Durham. One of our um, upper command staff sent out an email, said that there was a research study coming out. I was really interested in, in seeing how stress affected me. I think we're going to find as a result of this study that our police officers are extremely stressed out. Um, it's going to be probably pretty alarming. This pilot project with Durham is for a small number of officers to wear these biometric devices in the field during the course of their policing activities. We've selected the Empatica E4 device for data collection on the biometrics and policing pilot, which gets us five measures. Skin temperature, heart rate, the three-axis accelerometer for measuring movement, blood volume pulse, which is a measure of cardiovascular performance, and electrodermal activity, which ends up being a good measure of emotional arousal, or in this case, stress. And all those can come together to create critical measures and indicators that we collect for these officers. Big picture, one is to better understand that police officer community dynamic. So based on the situation, how are different officers experiencing stress? On a day-to-day -day basis, I do uniform patrol activities. So answer any kind of call that citizens may need. Could be a civil complaint, could be a motor vehicle accident, could be a death investigation, a whole wide array. Some of these are normal everyday encounters, a traffic stop, a domestic violence call, but to date we don't understand how officers take in that type of event and how it affects them immediately and also longer term in the course of the day, the course of a week, reacts in that particular situation, but also it could have impacts on the officer's health over the long term. My name is Charles Strickland. I'm a patrol officer, um, so my primary duty is responding to dispatch calls. Um, and when I have extra time, I can self-initiate things like traffic stops. I was curious about just stress, how it affects us, and I was curious about the measurements that would be gotten from this. People understanding how they're experiencing stress, what's going on in their own bodies. Driving to work today, if someone cuts you off, you may experience stress, your heart rate, other critical measures in your body go up. Maybe you don't really think about that, but collectively that can have a long-term impact on anyone. For police officers, it's no different, but their job, unlike many of us, is filled with high levels of uncertainty, high levels of stress. Your heart might race when you're with a violent offender or someone who is you know, resisting arrest. Because the stress isn't all coming from you know, traffic stops and somebody shooting at you or you know, chasing someone. It's also the personal side of it too. Dealing with citizens can be extremely stressful. It could be someone who's been abused, you're dealing with that as, as well if you're talking to somebody, to doing a death notification, even to being on the scene of somebody you know, that's deceased. When an officer has undergone a series of stressful events during the course of a day, perhaps they are then not put on another stressful call, maybe another officer handles that call if it comes in. Hey, I experienced it like this, but this officer experiences stress like this, and so maybe they could come up with a way to say, talk about how they can reduce it on both ends. Like if you know that you get stressed out on the call itself versus somebody who gets stressed out after the call, um, maybe I can talk about how do you handle on the call not getting stressed versus how do you handle it after the call when you do get stressed. At a research side, we have, there's also a long way to go in terms of how specific types of events impact different types of officers. Big picture is I think we're looking at finding ways, better ways for the officers and law enforcement agencies to understand how stress manifests in officers 
and to learn better ways of controlling it. We think it can have a direct benefit on the safety and the health of not only officers but also people they encounter. Controlling stress more effectively can lead to uh, better interactions between the police and the community. Ultimately, I think there are a numerous, numerous uh, possibilities that can come out of this, uh, and we hope we're involved and, and, and can help make contributions in a large number of those things. Mm -hmm.